Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today we are going to be working on block number 18 from my springtime sampler block of the month. Now in order to do block number 18 we need to take our four fabrics, take two of them and set those aside and on the back of these we need to draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other. Now what I'm going to do is take my long two and a half by eighteen and a half inch creative goods grids ruler and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other and I'll try to make it dark enough so that you can see it. And I'm going to do that again on my second one. Once I've done this I'm going to pin the two pieces of fabric together right sides together and I'm going to take them over to my sewing machine and what I'm going to do is sew a quarter of an inch away from this line on both sides of it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to set these two together. I'm going to pin on both sides just to secure it a little bit more. Let me do that on my second one. And again, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking the two pieces, lining them up, and then I'm going to stick a pin in them. I'm going to grab my wool pressing mat, and I'm just going to set these on there to transport back and forth from here to my sewing machine. That way they're kind of stuck here. They're not going to go any place and I can just walk back and forth with them. All right, so off I go to my sewing machine. Again, I'm going to sew on the quarter, a quarter of an inch away from this line on both sides of it. Then I'll come on back. All right, I have sewn. Maybe you can see on this side. I think you can see my stitches on this side. I've sewn a quarter of an inch away, it's hard to see it on this side, from the line on both sides on both squares. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two apart. In the, I'm gonna, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the drawn line. The reason why I'm cutting first before I press or set my seams is because this is done with a friction pen. And if I press it first, we all know what will happen is I'll have no line to cut on. Now I could use my ruler to measure from my seam line a quarter of an inch over and cut it then with the rotary cutter, but it's easier just to do it this way. So once I've done this, the next thing I'm going to do is set my seams. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about pressing. And the reason why I'm going to take an extra minute to talk to you about pressing is because in the very center of this block we have potentially a huge amount of bulk because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles coming together at one spot. Well, we want to reduce the bulk on this as much as we possibly can because that's going to make a real issue when we go to quilt it. What's going to happen is if you're quilting on a long arm, your long arm hopping foot's going to come across. It's going to hit that bump and it's going to jump and you're going to skip a stitch is really what you're going to do. And I don't want to be skipping any stitches, especially when I'm quilting. So. I'm going to first turn these two pieces so that I can easily press them. Now remember, we've stitched this and this is now the bias, but we still... Remember, this stitching line is on what we call the bias, so we do want to be careful about it. It has been stitched, therefore it is somewhat protected, but it still is the bias and we still can take our piece of fabric and get it out of shape with the iron. So the very first thing I'm going to do is set my seams, get those fabrics all nice and warm and cozy together, and then I am going to press all of my seams open. In the first block, 
when you watched that one, you saw that I pressed all but one seam open. This time, based on what I saw from my first block, I'm pressing every single seam open. I just think it will come out nicer, and this will tell me that for certain. I'm going to take my strip stick, and I'm going to lay my piece of fabric over it with my seam pretty much in the center. I'm going to open my seam so I can start working on it. Just going to finger press it, and then I'm going to allow the nose of my iron to do the bulk of the work that needs to be done here. I'm going to just take my iron, and I'm just going to press this seam open. Pressed open. The next thing I'm going to do is just come around to this side, and I'm going to press it again. All right, see these little dog ears? We'll be taking care of those shortly. So we're not going to worry about them quite yet. I'm going to set that stuff aside because it's definitely getting in my way. And off we go to our second block. If I can make my fingers work. Some days they just don't want to work as good as other days. Here I am again, just finger pressing open my seam. Taking my iron and really letting my iron do the bulk of the work. It's a good hot iron. I do have it on cotton, and I do not have water in this. I'm not using steam. If I feel like I need some steam for something, I will either add water to my fabric, a little spritz of the water to my fabric with my little fine mist that I use. This is great because, and I think you can see, I'll try to see if you can see it. Nope, you're not going to see it. It just produces this finest mist over my fabric, and I really do like that. So I'll either use this for just plain water, or I will use my Mary Ellen's Best Press. Now, I do use Mary Ellen's Best Press unscented. That's the one I use only because I am asthmatic. I love the scents, especially... There's one that's like a tropical or sea something. Love it. Absolutely love it. But I know that if I use it too much, I will definitely have issues with my asthma. And I don't want that. So I use the Best Press Unscented. And I've never had a problem with that one. So that works out great. All right. One more to go. And then we get to lay our block out. So here I go, I'm trying to make my fingers work again on the last one. And for some reason they just aren't quite working. One of the issues is, is my hands are really dry and if you are working with fabric with really dry hands, this tends to happen where it's kind of hard to get a hold of the fabric. There we go, now we got it. And you can see as I moved it down, it's really the tip of the iron that's doing the work. I'm not. Between the tip of the iron and my strip stick here, my seam is coming out very nicely. I'm going to give it one more press on this side. Before you go on, make certain that you square your blocks up first before you continue. And then I'm good. So now it's time to set my block up based on the design from our pattern and here's the design so what I'm going to do is just simply lay these out and I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to keep going right around until I get all four pieces set whoops I'm getting myself confused here there I go okay I'm still not going to worry about these little dog ears yet. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to sew these together two and two. I'm going to flip these right sides together. Now you can start by either pinning here or here. On the first block I started pinning here. This time I'll start pinning here. Just to give you a little bit of a change. 
Now I am going to line this black up all the way. If you feel like your black is not going together well, where it's not um, nice and square, like you can see right here, I do have a little bit off. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop and I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to need one that is at a minimum eight and a half inches square. So I have a, well, I can easily put my hands on my 12 and a half inch square ruler. So that's the one I grabbed. According to the directions, you need to square this up to, you need to square this up to eight inches. And you can see my block is substantially larger than the eight inches. So I'm going to take my diagonal line, take it right down through the center, and I'm going to take a minute and just get these squared up. So what I'm concentrating on is my line right here. And I am also looking to make sure that I'm pretty straight through here. So I'm going to trim. I'm going to flip this around. You can see one of my dog ears is gone. And I'm going to do that again. So I need to be at 8 inches. So I'm going to line it right up here. Diagonal line again. That diagonal line comes in handy for us a lot. And I'm just going to trim again. You can see that our blocks are a little bit oversized. And we do that so that you can take a minute to square these up. And that way your blocks come out very, very nice. And we want nice, we want nice size blocks. So here I go again. I'm going to square these other three up. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about pinning these. Okay, all of my blocks are now squared up. So let's do that again. I'm going to just simply lay these out just like I did before. And let's see if I can get this right. I seem to be having a harder time laying this one out than I did the last one. I guess that happens every once in a while. I'm going to grab my pins and I'm going to put these together now. Just rotate them so they're a little easier to work with. And now what I'm going to do is pin it. When I get down here, I'm really going to do some pinning because I really want to hold this nice and straight. See how I'm off here just a little bit? Can you see that? I want to move that over, but I want it to really stay in place. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to pin it twice. I'm going to pin once here, double check myself, yep, I'm lined up good, and I'm going to do one more pin, and then that way it really should not move when I go to stitch it. I'm going to do that on both pieces, one more time, slide that one forward, and then here we go. I'm going to start here. I fold back my corner and I double check. I'm going to pin, fold back my corner, double check again, and again I'm really good. Then one more. All right, I'm going to take these over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam here and here. And then I will be back to show you the next time. All right, I've sewn my seams. The first thing I'm going to do is set my seams. I always do that first. So I'm just going to lay these both down so that I can easily set the seams. Now I'll do this one. Okay. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my strip stick again because I am going to press my seams open again. I just feel with this block based on what happened with the first block, I just think my block's going to come out a little bit flatter and my points are going to be just that much closer. So we're going to try a full blown every seam pressed open on this block. I love doing the same block in multiple times in a row because what happens is every time you do that block you learn a little bit more on how it lays and the way things want to be on their own. Sometimes I think blocks have their own little personality in how they're constructed and I really think that it makes a difference when we do the blocks all together, the exact same block, time after time, which is why I put these three blocks together in one month, only because I felt it was a good experience, especially because how many fabrics we have coming together right here in the center. So I'm going to finger press it open, and now I'm going to press right across my strip stick. Now, if you're wondering where you can get a strip stick, I do have them on my website, so you are welcome to go out there and take a look at them. They come in three different sizes, and this one is the 18 inch, and you can tell it's very well loved. I have used it for years, and, and I just love my strip stick. All right. Now that I've got these together and pressed, I'm going to now put them together to get them into a group of four blocks. This is how I want my block to look at the end. So I'm just going to take this piece and flip it right over. And now I need to pin again and I need to do a lot of pinning. Because I'm going to be sewing like this and then I'm going to hit these seams, see what could happen? All of this could fold right over and create a big bump right there and I don't want that that's going to really disrupt things. So I'm going to first fold it back and make sure that I am nice and tight right there. And I'll sit like this for a second so I can zoom in and show you. I want those nice and tight and close. Then I'm going to fold it back again and just make sure that right here I'm coming together nice and I am. I am picking it up. But when I pick it up, what I'm doing is really trying hard not to move it at all. I want it to really stay nice and together. One pin on one side of my seam, another pin on the other side of my seam. And now, just because I've got so much distance here, I am going to put a pin at each corner. All right, I'm ready to go press this. I'll be right back. All right, my block's sewn together. I'm going to set my seam first. By now you have a pattern here. Setting that seam before you do anything else. I'm going to lay my piece down over my strip stick, and I'm going to press it open again. So here we go. Finger press to begin with, and then use the nose of your iron to tell your fabric what to do. All right. See, especially here, I took an extra minute to go over it, and I think that makes a difference. You've got an awful lot of fabric right there. All right. I'm also not going to hesitate to, I think it's pretty good, whoops, it's hot, but I am going to spray just a little bit of water on that then I'm going to take my iron and I'm just going to set it right over the top. Okay. I'm going to remove my strip stick and I'm going to turn it over. And yeah, I think that's better. I'm going to give this side a good press. And then I'll grab my other block and show you the difference. And our first block, we took one of the seams and we pressed it to one side. But all the other ones we pressed open. And I want to show you the difference in my centers. Here's this center where they've all been pressed open. 
Doesn't that look nice on the back? Kind of makes me excited. I know it's weird, but it does. Now on our first block, this is the first one we did. You can see I didn't, I can tell that I pressed one seam to the side and sure enough I did this one. I st pretty good right here, but boy, I'll tell you, I can feel the difference here in the bulk versus here and I much better like this one. So that is our block number 12 of our springtime sampler. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end while we made our block. And come on back tomorrow because tomorrow we've got another block that we're going to be making for our springtime sampler. So I'll see you again soon.